With the mid-season break now over, the Formula Forza Super GT season unpacks its bags in the city of Atlanta, more specifically Road Atlanta, for the fifth round on the eight-leg calendar. The DuPont Atlantic shootout is the race we're all waiting for. There is so much to talk about, so dust off your shoes. It's time for the Formula Forza pre-race podcast by Jet Motorsport. Hey guys, I'm your host, Derek James, Gamertag, my name is I am joined, as always, by my colleague, Ryan McDowell, Gamertag, Cypher68. Now, my brother Brad, when a J, is not going to be here with us this week, so it's just going to be me and Ryan. I mean, we'll see how this goes. Usually Brad's a comic relief, but let's get right into our uh, Camino recap. Well, I'm going to start off here with our qualifying results, and FMS Senna took pole for GT500 with a 56.775. FMS Top Seeker took a close second with a 56.803. Third was XPR Moon Tower with a 57.146. Fourth was a Subway Cookie with a 57.46 or 6.42 rather. And fifth place was Mr. Dr. Spaceman with a 57.971. In GT300, Alex P for LCR took pole with a 105.717. In Flames, and the Ferrari took second with a 105.739. Two one thousandths of a second behind the pole time. Jenny Touche, or, uh, sorry, ZX Squid took third with a 105.904. Jenny Two Shoes took the fourth place with a 106.093. And his teammate LMR Legadas took uh, fifth place with a 106.155. Ryan, do you want to uh, start going into our race recap? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, because of how the uh, grid penalties worked out and, and whatnot, we did have... Uh, FMS Senna starting from the back with a pretty sizable uh, delay before he could start. And <clears throat> we had Mr. Dr. Spaceman f- from uh, Space Mountain Racing. And holy cow, did uh, did he shine this week. Uh, FMS Senna was the, was the steam train that couldn't be stopped. The, the delay didn't matter. He charged right back through the field and was, was right back in the lead. Although couldn't really get legs on uh, on top secret uh throughout the race we watched this and fms senna was able to weave through the gt300 pack fairly quickly i mean it, it took him a couple of laps to be to actually get ahead of all the uh the gt300s it was it was about two laps before he got ahead and then it was uh charging down the rest of the gt500 field now in the gt300 field it was uh it was actually lmr led got ass from um, for, right from Midnight Performance Development that uh, Midnight Performance Development. You got it. Uh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was leading the GT three hundreds from from the start of the race. There uh, followed shortly there by Platonic Lotus, uh, his his first outing with us, and you know it was a, it was a pretty exciting race to watch because you saw Alex P and in flames charge right up through the field. And uh, it was a really engaging race to see a lot of people make some daring p- passes in places that I didn't think that they would be passing. Uh, you know, Senna was a little bit more cautious here. Um, it, it, you know, he didn't make a lot of the, you know, at Sakuba, I, I think we, we kind of had our breath taken aback uh, at a couple of points where Senna made some really insane moves that uh, still didn't cause damage. But, um, you know, here at at uh, Camino, he he kept a level head and and didn't pull such a massive gap. I think by the very end of the race, we were only looking at about a, a four second gap. FMS Senna then did end up taking the race. Uh, that's his fourth in a row, fourth pull to win for him. Uh, can anything really stop FMS Senna and uh, the Jet Vets? Don't know, but FMS Top Secret then does hold on to uh, second. And Mr. Dr. Spaceman, as I said, huge day for him to shine, gets around Bloody Kane, and finishes on the third step of the podium. It was a bad outing there for, for Bloody Kane. I really thought he would be finishing second here. If not being able to actually win this race, he falls back to fourth in this race. Uh, now, Moon Tower then, also starting from from sixth on the GT500 grid, but did start with uh, grid delay, uh, only managed to move up one position ahead of Ferrari Fanatic uh, 9, 
uh, from the Jet Academy team. Now, what was interesting about this is Moon Tower had exceptional pace in in qualifying, but it was it was FMS Top Secret really that that kept Senna within within sights at, at all times. Now, in the Group B race, it was it was really Slamont that uh, that shined. He's also from Space Mountain Racing, so it was a really big weekend for for those guys. Uh, TLR Eclipse then uh, finishes third in Group B. Smithy Lad finishes second there. Subway Cookie crashes out in Group A, decides to retire from the race, and unfortunately that puts him 11th overall. FW Mastodon from Group B crashes, or I suppose lags out, uh, giving him 12th overall. Uh, in the GT300 field, like I said, Alex P and Inflames charge through the field. Alex P takes the win here, his second, and uh, second also for his team. Uh, subbing in for Scurry76. In Flames grabs second place, Johnny Two Shoes. A huge performance from him going from eighth on the grid, actually started, uh, you know, the furthest back in Group A and managed to still get on the podium. A huge performance from from him. BTR McNish then starts third, finishes fourth. Uh, ZX Squid, uh, net neutral there for him, starts fifth, finishes fifth. Uh, XY101 encountered some damage, started fourth, ends up six with that damage. LMR led got ass, got into a huge accident with uh, Subway Cookie, and it appears that neither side is is pointing blame. They're just calling it a race incident, both of them. Uh, it appears that that uh, LMR led got ass as he was exiting the pit, went off to the off the track to the left, then came back on the track. Uh, and hugged the inside, and that's where the contact between a Subway Cookie was. Uh, Subway Cookie was coming through on a flyer lap. So was LMR led got ass to blame here? N- not really sure, but Subway Cookie says uh, that, you know, between driver communication and and whatnot, I mean, everything just happened so quickly, he's not filing for anything, and neither is uh, Midnight Performance Development. So unfortunate for both of those drivers, but uh, it was it was quite exciting to see this race unfold. In the Group B for GT300, we had uh, Outlaw Star, that was uh, Austin Lee, uh, now transferred over onto the Serpent Racing team, had a pretty good uh, outing in, in GT300, won the Group B event. That's over Hypnotic Foil, who we know to be a pretty good racer. And then we had Platonic Lotus in Group A lag out with Dark Dragonoid 13 uh, retiring due to damage. So I think that pretty much uh, sums it up for the action in the race. Um, one thing to note here is FMS Top Secret throughout the race, he was... I don't know that anybody really could have passed him, but uh, he was certainly lagging throughout the event. So there were some some dicey maneuvers as FMS Senna got around him. Derek, do you have anything to add on uh, on the Camino race? Um, the pit the pit exit was definitely a bit dicey there. Uh, we watched it a few times during the race, guys coming out and taking it really easy, and they kind of heeded our warning when we said that you really have to watch out coming out of the pisser, so that was nice. Um, the way Senna came back completely blew my mind. We were watching that happen, and we came back from watching a GT300 battle, and suddenly Senna was in the lead. It just, I mean, he even said it himself to me after the race. It was pretty much uh, just a, a happening because he came, he pitted at the right time to get around the two Serpent Racing guys, and he managed to come out ahead of him, so he said... He he himself said that it was pretty much luck that won him that race. Now, I know early on in the race, Mr. Dr. Spaceman was leading the race and had Bloody Kane all over the back of him. Now, uh, one thing that we noted in the race, and if you go uh, re-watch this race, you'll see what we're talking about, but uh, I, I kind of think that Mr. Dr. Spaceman pitted too early uh, for where he was running. I think I would have stayed out until the very late stages of the race, and it could have been a different race if uh, if that was the case. Could have allowed FMS Top Secret. Um, I know he, he went into the pits, but through the changeout, FMS Top Secret, it looked like was going to get around Mr. Dr. Spaceman via the pits, um, when Mr. Dr. Spaceman went in early, though, it allowed clean air that Senna filled that gap and was able to get right through. Um, and somehow Bloody Kane was not able to capitalize on Mr. Dr. Spaceman going into the pits early. Uh, but 
it's it's really interesting to see that happen and and you know props to mr dr spaceman for holding on to a podium position here now uh points yeah let's get right into points Shall let's we? do that yeah yeah all right for gt500 fms center from jet vets has opened up a 200 point lead over the second placement at FMS Top Secret. Senna has 497 to Top Secret's 283. In third place, the other Serpent Racing driver, XPR Moon Tire, with 283 points, also tied with his teammate. <laughs> and one point behind those two, the BTR driver of Subway Cookie is sitting with a 282. So definitely close in the top five, but rounding out that said top five is Bloody Kane from XPR with a 261. As for teams, Jet Vets is sitting atop still with 607 points, but growing ever closer are Serpent Racing with 566 points. In third place is Bosch Tech Racing with 427. In fourth, Space Mountain Racing with 347. And in fifth, the Jet Academy team with 320 points. As for GT300, in first we have In Flames from AF Corsa Trescento with it with 336 points. In second, ZX Squid from HPR with 276. In third, Johnny Two Shoes from Midnight Performance Development with 269 points. In fourth, last week's winner, Alex P with a 245. In fifth is BTR McNish from BTR with 211. As for team points in GT300, LCR has taken the lead after their back-to-back wins with 519 points. In second place, the Ferraris of AF Corsa Trescento with 459. In third sits Midnight Performance Development with 447. In fourth is HPR High Performance Racing with 402 points. And in fifth, Scuderia EMR with 324 one thing I find interesting about the points before we move on is that tie between the Serpent Racing drivers. This past week, Serpent Racing actually outscored Jet Vets. Um, now, that's not good news for Jet Vets, but I mean, there is still a, a you know a bit of a gap there. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens on that front. But that was certainly good news for for Serpent Racing to to have that. Uh, outscoring of, of jet vets um you know and and how close it is if you take senna out of the equation the battle for second is extremely hot you know what i mean it, it's it's like mm-hmm. the the battle for the best of the rest i guess i mean none of these drivers are are bad drivers at all it's just somehow this is like the perfect combination of driver and and car here for uh fms senna and for everybody else, it seems like a, a really good uh, competition for who's gonna who's gonna finish out in the top five and where. Uh, specifically, who's gonna take that number two spot? Uh, you know, I I gotta say, Subway Cookies looking pretty good in my book, but I, I'm never gonna discount those Serpent Racing boys. Especially the, this week's track, though. Yeah, absolutely. You're definitely gonna see Subway Cookie. Definitely got more power. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about some of the things that's changing in the league uh, for this next race. We've got uh, on we've got MFR Speedy. That's one of uh, WRC Capes drivers on. uh, I believe that's on the Scuderia EMR team is going to be swapped out for Slapshift for Speed. Uh, We've seen him drive with us before, so we know he's a. Uh, a talented driver. We know he's got he's got some skills and and certainly knows his place on the track. It'll be interesting to see what he does for that team, and we know he's going to pull down some nice and consistent points for that team. Um, you know, can they improve their their place? Right now, they sit fifth. Can they hold off Bosch Tech Racing and Python Motorsports? That's a tall order, and I think again we've got to hand it to WRC Cape for assembling such a a good crew for his two teams this year. Um, but an, another driver change that we talked about last time was, uh, was David Goss coming to TLR. That transition is going to happen this week. Uh, you see his, his gamer tag, I, I Goss, I, I, he will come on to the, uh, the TLR team and you'll see Alex P leave LCR as he was just subbing in for Scurry 76. So can LCR hang on to those points now that uh alex p is gone you know who knows uh but 
you know, both of those guys, Sean and Simon, are are very skilled drivers. Sean is uh, XY101, Simon is Scurry76. Um, but, man, you know, the Weissman has, has proven that it can be a race-winning car in the hands of Alex P. Can they keep that momentum going into the second half of the season here? Not really sure. What do you what do you think, Derek? You saw XY101 kind of pull it together at Camino. He uh he kind of been flirting with uh, making group A pretty much every race this year and that tune that he got from Alex P and maybe it was just the motivation from driving with such a good, you know, such a talented driver, he was able to actually pull out a group A uh qualifying and actually did very well during the race. So um they definitely the talent's there for him. But it uh, it all depends of whether or not they are tuning for themselves now, or Alex is helping them out for it, and maybe he's still coaching them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, so tell us about all the team changes for Jet because they're quite numerous here, aren't they? Yes, um, you might have seen it on our Facebook for you guys that know. Um, we did have big news coming this week. Um, there is going to be a large shakeup in the Jet Motorsport driver slash team structure before this week's race um as for jet vets chicken mchaggard has um has told us that he may not be able to make most of the races left so he is dropping his spot on jet vets and taking his place will be for our fanatic nine adam boros out of jet academy stepping up and taking that spot as for jet academy i will be dusting off my driving gloves and driving for jet academy with john lawaji and some of you might already know we have a new team in the works we're still trying to get the logistics together it might might come this week we're shooting for this week's race um but you'll definitely see it next or next race if not this week um brad will actually be driving for that team and we're still trying to figure out a second driver it might be james hall it might be chicken mchaggard but as of right now we're just trying to get that together so another rundown again jet vets will be fms son of Ferrari fanatic nine jet academy will be um fw mastodon and magnum 278 and the new team will be one of j and uh racer x to be determined um but other than that yes lots of big news this week for us and uh we're moving on to our predictions ryan um, we got the DuPont Atlantic shootout. What do you think is going to happen, Senor? So we've got 45 laps at Ro- at Road Atlanta Club. Now, this is the track that we had the most testing on. So I think you're going to see a lot of hone times here that, uh, f- you know, if the public is, is um, sort of comparing their best laps here, I think this will be one of the tracks that our guys seem really fast at because this is where all the testing went down. Or well, not all the testing. This is where a majority of the test sessions took place, and I think you're going to see some incredibly quick times uh, up and down the, the the board here. Now, this favors both grip and power cars. I mean, we saw the GTR uh, manage to get the highest top speed here. The Weissman's going to be much the same, but yet they can't manage that uh, that uphill uh, right hander that makes this the club circuit. Uh, they can't take it at the same kinds of speeds that, let's say, the um, McLarens and the the Ferraris, uh, even that that uh, four five eight uh, can can take this at. So it'll be really interesting to see, you know, how this plays out, especially with the the huge time penalty that uh, FMS Senna is going to have here. You know, I, I really cannot predict how uh, how the race is going to go in qualifying though what, what do you think for gt500 what, what do you have for us as for gt500 this week um we are expecting a poll time somewhere between the 47 and a half to 46 and a half um given it a whole second there just keeping it broad because who knows what's going to happen this week in qualifying but we are expecting within that one second 46 and a half to a 47 and a half for poll time as for the rest of the field we are expecting a group a cutoff at about a 49.5, mid mid to high 49s around there, but probably around a 49.5, 49.6. Um, so if you're looking to make Group A this week, that's what you want to shoot for below a 49.5. Um, as for you know who's going to get pole, I mean who knows, but um, definitely this week you're going to see the uh, the GTR definitely has a power advantage here this track. But the first sector actually benefits the Honda. The Honda is does go faster through the first sector of the track. And you are seeing guys take the uh, 
the kink in two three at turns two and three actually taking that um at either three quarter throttle or maybe even full throttle sometimes through just like the r1 cars did there's enough grip here for the high grip cars to actually swing through there with a decent amount of speed the gtr actually is getting through there with some with actually some throttle on not just letting off but um Definitely that first sector is where you get to see most of the action this week, but also down into the, uh, at the end of the straightaway, into what turn would that be on this layout? Turn six? Yeah, let's just go with turn six. That uh, that uh, corner at the end of the straightaway, the left-hander, but you're definitely going to see a lot of action there this week. Um, definitely a lot of passes on the back straight between classes, so that's definitely where you're going to want to concede this week. We know guys aren't going to do it. We know there's going to be GT500 drivers going around you know in the first sector the second sector but definitely the straightaway and right to the beginning of the third sector is where you definitely want to concede for the gt300 cars ryan you got any uh, any other stuff to input yeah you know i i think that the this qualifying will be really interesting because it's such a sh- short track i think it's going to be incredibly close in in qualifying i mean i despite having so much testing here i think it will be really close because we're we're already talking about sub one minute uh lap times and this should be our shortest track on the on the calendar if i'm not mistaken um i i don't know if you can confirm that or not but this is this is one of the quickest lap times not necessarily our shortest track but this should be one of our quickest lap times on the entire calendar um now one of the one of the things that's that's key to this course is how much speed you can maintain through turn one and how much momentum you can keep through what is that turn three that that little kink at the top of the hill yeah three and four is uh, actually the chicane i was talking about yeah so and then through the s's uh it, it's pretty much just a uh, you know, if you can't take that full throttle, you're definitely losing speed. Not, I gotta imagine that everybody's gonna be full throttle through there, in the uh, you know on their flyer lap, and then the tricky one is turn five, the right hander that goes up the hill. Um, now I know that that some cars can carry a lot here um, in in the GT three hundreds. There's cars. This is going to be what separates the cars. The the F forty has just a ton of mechanical grip here and is just wonderful through turn five but the mclaren at the at the same point has a lot of downforce um not mechanical grip but just downforce grip and should still be fine through this area where they're gonna have trouble is like into you know like the the chicane there when you when you start to go uphill the ferrari is going to have a pretty big uh, i'm sorry after the long straight you turn left at the at the end of the straight and then you're starting to go uphill to finish the lap out uh that's where the mclarens might be losing traction versus the f40s might have an advantage there uh the weissmans man i i really they're just going to have to be really smooth and get lots of pull down that straight because they've got to exploit that they're going to be able to pull some of the fastest speeds here. So maybe BTR McNish, we're going to see some some excellent lap times out of him just from raw speed. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, but But clearly this is a track that is going to be, you know, a really exciting qualifying period. And I, I can't wait to see what happens here. I mean, you know, of all the the tracks we go to this is probably the one i'm looking forward to most is seeing how this plays out now in qualifying we have uh we have submitted a preferred method of qualifying now we've the past two events we've had uh we've had some talk about white lines and staying on the track and and whatnot because we can't as uh validators of the lap if the game allows you to go beyond the white lines, there's nothing that that we can see from you know validators administration. There's nothing that we can see that tells us is that lap clean or dirty. Now, one thing we can do uh, that will allow you to just use whatever line the game says is is clean is if you run your your qualifying with an AI and collisions are off, so you're ghosting, the AI will run a clean lap. 
So if you run with an AI, we can see, you know, you do your, um, if you order by uh, compare best laps, we will see whether you run better than the AI or not. So that is one way that you can bypass the, the white line rule is if you set up your race for this, uh, your, your qualifying session in this manner where you have an AI, collisions are off, compare best lap scores, yes, and, uh, and you just outrun the AI, then we'll know that that's a clean time. Uh, Derek, what do you think about this, uh, this new proposed way of qualifying? It definitely um, makes it easier for us to validate it because then we could definitely tell, like you said, if it's a clean lap or not. Um, it'll it's a, it's a good comparison. It'll be a uh, a good way to tell the speed of the cars. It'll be a um, it's a yeah, like you said, it's a good way to validate the lap. It's a good way to make sure that the the driver did it properly and to make sure that he's doing the right speeds and taking the corners properly, as opposed to you know cutting corners and. Uh, you know, skipping chicanes and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, one thing we are sticking to on this is that the GT 500s must go down into second gear, uh, at the end of the straightaway. Now that is going to put a strain on the gearbox and you're going to have to rise a thousand RPM. So for you drivers that are having issues with this, you're going to have to tweak the gearbox so that second gear, uh, works for you down there. You know, you're going to have to let second gear, rise enough uh that that it's usable here now we've done enough testing to know that that this still works out sixth gear at the you'll hit sixth gear on the uh the back straight and you might even hit it down into turn one but uh you it's really just that second gear you have to be worried about at the bottom of the hill there have you uh have you had much issue with that derek getting into second gear there and using that properly at the bottom actually yeah um our gearing set here i will say we we try to do it for the most uh carrying momentum around the the first sector we try to set it up to where we wouldn't have to change gear as much through the uh, first and second sector and it's a definite struggle to try and get down into second you i for the first like five sessions i did last week it took all of my being to think all right now you need to downshift into second and in order to do that with our setup we have to slow way down than we could possibly go but it's our only disadvantage to, for the rest of the track the, i mean with for the rest of the track we're up to speed and or quicker than most of our competition but definitely going down into the chicane towards the end of the track we're going to be a bit slower we don't have as much mechanical grip as the uh as like the uh supra we we're just definitely banking on our speed this week and it's by setting it up for speed, we're definitely having trouble getting down into second there. Are you worried that in testing, uh, we found the Supra to actually be the fastest car here? Uh, yes, I would say there's a definite worry there. Um, what worries me the most is pretty much all of these guys did all of this testing here during the preseason. I showed up for one testing session because I wasn't driving. So, out of everybody, I would say I'm at the biggest disadvantage this week because I didn't spend three, four weeks in a row just testing at this track most of the time, and I definitely had to try and make up all that speed this last week. So I definitely have a lot of worry when it comes to the Super being quicker. For me, it's more of am I as quick as the rest of the field? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Now, this is going to be one of our shorter races as well because if you, you know, 45 laps you're looking at sub one minute laps even for the gt300s uh we're looking at about a 40 minute race for i mean it'd be 30 some minutes for the gt500s this is for sure a sprint for the gt500s for the gt300s this is a, a little bit longer but not i mean we're still talking a sub 45 minute race so you know this whole season is pretty much um sprint races you know if you compare it to our r1 uh, which really start to, you know, get to you as far as, as concentration and whatnot. Uh, somewhere around the 45 minute to an hour mark is when most people's concentration starts to dip and they start making mistakes because they've been in the seat too long and, and whatnot. But this should be a very, you know, this should be a flat out race, uh, one pit stop, 
Now, this is a little bit of an odd pit entrance. Have you taken this pit entrance? Yeah, in uh, R1. Yeah, this is a, a little odd, but it, it's not too bad uh, so long as you follow the road. If you if you cut it across the grass, you might be okay, but you also might hit the wall if you're coming in too hot. So you just have to be careful of that. Uh, where it ejects you, you're, you're totally fine. You, you come out and you just can't cut across traffic, but you, you come out actually at a, at a decent point. Um, you know, we, we didn't have any issues there during, during testing and, and any, uh, any of the sessions we ran there, there were no, uh, collisions because of the, the pit there. We did have some interesting ones, uh, you know, when, when we had Bulin and, uh, Alex testing here for R1, we had uh, a swap. We had Bulin come in first and Alex come out uh, come in second, but yet somehow in the pit lane, because of how the you know releasing works, Alex's car actually came out first. It was it was bizarre, and we may see some of that here. And we just got to move forward with it. I mean, it's it's really odd stuff when that does happen. But uh, you know, this is one of the tracks that that can happen at. What what do you think? What are some of the focal points for your teams, and and what do you think the focal points will be for even some of the GT three hundred cars here at uh, at this track? For the whole field, and what we've been talking about at Jet, it's definitely. Um, it's such a short race that it's pretty much you need to get the best start you can possibly get. There is no slouch in these first few laps here. You have to make sure. We always say don't be a hero because it's a long race. Well, this isn't a long race, so you got to try and be a hero now. Um, yes, you have your couple two restarts, but I mean, hell, on the last restart, if if we had no none left, you're still gonna have to go for it. You can't play it. You can't play it nice here this week. You got because you got such a short race. The pit stop is definitely going to be the crucial part. If you go early at the back, you might be able to make up some ground. But if you go early at the front, you're going to get overtaken, and you, there's no time. There is absolutely no time in this race to be able to make up that make up that uh, time you lost. So definitely going to be down all to strategy this week, and how much pace you could get out of the car so early in the race. I know some cars, it takes a while for them to warm up the tires, but you need to make sure on your out lap, on that on that warm-up lap, that you try and get your tires as warm as possible. And if you're a GT500, just hope to God the GT300 cars don't take a long time getting, see it, getting set. So there's a lot of factors this week. It's definitely going to be the most stressful race on a part of, you know, uh, like preparation and uh logistics it's just going to be all everything is going to have to go on at at once in your head you're going to have to go you're going to have to be thinking all right if i don't get such a good start what do i do then um do i pit now or do i wait till do i wait till later you're definitely going to have to it's all focused on the individual this race now you can't just uh think oh um the guy in front of me will make a mistake no it's a 30 minute race he's going to be on his a game also nobody's going to get tired so Definitely going to be probably the toughest race this year. I mean, Sakuba was kind of hard, but this is a much faster track, like speeds wise. So you're definitely going to have to watch out this week for traffic. You're going to have to be, like I said, on your A game 100% of the race. You cannot make a mistake, otherwise, it will hurt you. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Now, since I, I don't think I, I got to my qualifying predictions for, for this race, for GT300 anyway. I do think we're going to see probably a 57, maybe even a high 56. That might be stretching it, it just a bit, but I, I think we're going to see a 57, uh, roughly 10 seconds behind the GT500 field. Um, and I think some of our drivers will struggle to get under the the 59 mark. You know, I, th- I think our exceptionally quick drivers will be in the 57, 58s. And then we'll see some spread out in the 59s and then maybe even some one minutes there. Really tough to call where that cutoff is going to be for Group A uh, with with eight GT300 cars in there. But um, yeah, so if you're if you're already at a minute, you got to you got to find speed somewhere. You know, you, you really got to tune your line, run with other drivers uh, you, you know, find, find somebody that, that can mentor you around this track because one minute isn't going to cut it here. You got to be in the 59s, 58s, I think, to really be competitive. Um, 
you know, if you're one of the drivers that's that's not starting at the back because of grid penalty, this may be your race to shine. So really get that practice in here and make sure that that for this sprint race, you can hold them off and uh, and, and score some really big points for your team. Now, you know, one thing I, I wanted to do, since we're not doing a video of the week this week, I, I kind of want to have a team, a team of the week for each host. Now, we don't have Brad here, but uh, I, I guess, Derek, what do you think your team of the week is? And you better not take mine. <laughs> it's okay, Brad would just agree with whatever you said anyways. Um, I would actually have to go with uh, LCR in GT300. Um, they definitely outperformed this week. I mean, yes, they had Alex P, but XY 101 was not a slouch this week either, and they def- they racked up their biggest points race weekend that they've ever had as a team. So that really shows to the hard work they put in last week. And they they both had great races. Neither of them really made a mistake, and neither of them really had any trouble. So, I mean, they're my team of the week because they put so much hard work in, and they uh, they managed to stay so consistent, and they pulled out a good win and a good points result. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, LCR is a solid team, and uh, you know that that Weissman. I don't know that they they chose that car because I, I mean I know MPD said that they chose the car for a bit of a laugh. They thought that they would have some fun with it. I think uh, I think Sean and Simon are quite serious about that Weissman and trying to extract. You know what what has already been proven is the race winning car. Uh, that it is. So, uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with you there on the LCR. My team of the week has got to be Space Mountain Racing because, holy crap, if you look at these guys, okay, Motegi, 51 points. Nürburgring Grand Prix, they did fairly well, 97 points there. Sukuba, 69 points for the team. So an average somewhere around 70, 75 points, somewhere in there. And then at Camino, you get... Mr. Dr. Spaceman on on third, on the podium, and Slamont wins Group B. I mean, they they score 130 points. Uh, that's phenomenal. That's almost double their their usual point score. So Space Mountain Racing, you know, really hats off. They are the, the second highest scoring team in GT500 of the week uh, with 130 points, only outscored by Serpent Racing, who had 150 points, and that's their first race that they've actually outscored Jet Vets. Space Mountain Racing actually outscored Jet Vets. Jet Vets, 126 points this week. Um, So, wow, you know, really big stuff from Space Mountain Racing. Now, a team to look out for, I suppose an honorable mention, will be... uh, XP Racing in that Lexus. Last week, we didn't have Rock Lewis S, and so it was just Bloody Kane flying solo. So with Rock Lewis S, if he's back, this could be a, a really critical race for them um, because he's still off the podium and still doesn't have any uh, grid penalty. So we're looking at at some potentially big, big results here for Bloody Kane. I know we've been calling for him, but this may be the race that it happens. Uh, we've got four races to go with this race this weekend. So, you know, this, this is certainly not over for XP Racing. Right now they sit sixth in the uh, in the standings, but they could move up very quickly here. Right now they're at 303 points. That's certainly not out of range. Uh, it's only 17 points behind fifth place Jet Academy. And, you, you know, 447, 347 ahead of that. So really some really strong performances here from XP Racing could launch them right back up, I dare to say, even into the top three if they finish out the season well here. Um, but Space Mountain Racing, my team of the week, and I look forward to you know a lot more uh, a lot more from them. What do you think of Space Mountain Racing this past weekend? Definitely, like they did with like LCR, they definitely stepped up last week and they showed you know what they're here to do. Um, they impressed us, like you said. Um, they really uh, they really came out and did their stuff. They uh, they showed us what what talent they have and what they can do on the track. Um, we we could definitely see more of them here this week. Like you said, the the super is the fastest, uh, 
or no, sorry, other way around. Um, but what we could see is definitely a good performance out of them this week. All they got to do is keep the momentum up, and you know they could do fairly well this week, and we uh, could see another good result out of them. Okay, so back to uh, Road Atlanta Club. What do you, what do you think? You think there's going to be some some GT500 or GT300 cars? that try and carry just a little bit too much speed up that right-hander that makes this the club circuit and uh, find themselves off in the sand on the left. Yes. It's happened yes. to every single do. one of our, our test sessions. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can get some big damage there depending on how how much speed you're trying to carry through there. It's It takes a just a ton of time off your lap because everybody's just whipping around there, and if you get caught out there, you almost come down to a crawl before you can get back on track, and it's kind of hazardous to get back on track. You almost have to go forward to the straightaway and kind of merge in. What you said there, all it takes to, to end up going off the track there is you uh, you take a wrong entry into that corner if you don't, because if you come coming down the hill, if you go through the S's, you swing, you hug the curb on that left-hander, and then you swing wide, then go back and hug the curb, on the right hander, but then you got to shoot back across and clip the curb on the other left hander and the S's, and then you got to do another huge turnaround and go back to the right. And if you don't do it properly, you either hit the curb and go out wide, or you just the car's momentum swings you out wide. So it is fairly easy to find yourself, you know, caught out in the boonies out there, and it has happened before. And I, I've done it a few times during testing. You know, if you play it wrong, you will end up with damage. And I've rolled it during a test session, clipping the wall. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the more dangerous spots in the track this week, especially if you're going to be in traffic. You're definitely going to have to watch out there this week. Now, you can you can be honest here. In testing, the final turn, that full throttle right-hander, you know, that takes you right over the line, have you taken that with too much speed and not enough turn, and you hit those boxes on the left? No. Damn it. It was just me. <laughs> you tell me. Now, the other one is if somebody tries to carry too much speed into uh, turn one. The first corner. Yeah, yeah right. You can do that also. That, that's the one that, that catches a lot of people out. Or, you know, at the top of the hill, that chicane there, if, if you don't thread the needle there enough, you'll be off on the left. Uh, what is that? Turn four, the left-hander after that, that yeah. kink, you'll find yourself out there. And that's another spot where you got to be really careful about how you enter the track because, you know, you got cars whipping around there. They are building ahead of steam there. And if you come back on track, you, you almost have to go further down before you can, you can rejoin. So pretty much what we just said is um, if you do it wrong, you will, you will have consequences, which is what happens in motorsport when you do shit wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I haven't seen is uh, n- not too many people are blowing through the breaking point of that long straightaway. Almost everybody gets their breaking point right there. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use a little bit of grass break there, and I know we don't regulate grass breaking. I mean, I, I don't really, uh, I don't look pleasantly on grass breaking, but there's not really a whole lot we can do with our current regulation on it, and you know, I certainly don't condone it at all, but a lot of people are, are are finding no issue hitting the breaking point for uh the end of that long straightaway. What about what about you? No, it's actually not that hard. It's, um compared to R one and R one you you pretty much tried to carry so much speed down there. I actually overshot it during the race. Um but it's actually fairly easy to take that corner and no matter what car you in. Um, these cars are light enough and they have enough braking power to where no matter you can pretty much brake up until about the nearly the 200 foot marker you can hold it off and you, you'll you have no issues getting the car around that corner. Now the, the uphill there is also kind of a tricky one. If you get the line right you can get on the power really early uh, for you know the, the uphill before you go under the bridge and and that can dictate your your final speed into turn one. I mean, it, it's full throttle from there into turn one. So that's that's big stuff there. If if you can get that throttle point just right after the the long uh, straight. 
All right. Well, do you have any uh, final thoughts for us there, Derek? As usual. Well, no, not actually. I'm completely wrong. You're definitely going to have to push it this week. It's such a short race. Like I was saying earlier, um, if you think you have a shot, go for it. If there's a gap, go for it this week. You cannot afford to hesitate. It's such short of a race that you need to make sure everything is on point this week. You need to make sure that you have do as much practice as you can before qualifying and, and during qualifying. Do as much as you can. Make sure you have the track down. Make sure you can hot lap as much as you can when you're not in traffic and make sure you handle yourself correctly when you are in traffic um don't don't try and you know pull a senna and completely thread the needle between four cars because that could end up badly um but definitely you're gonna have to be forceful this week with traffic and gt500 you're gonna have to, you're kind of had you're gonna have to take some weird lines around here. it's such a tight track you might have to uh if you want to stay close to the guy in front of you and or open up a gap you might have to take some unconventional lines around here to try and do that. So definitely going to be a very tense and very action-packed race this week. Ryan, you're going to have a fun time commentating. <laughs> yeah, it should be me solo this week, so that'll be an interesting experience. Me going back to uh, one commentator on our Twitch channel, and if you're not already uh, subscribed to our, our Twitch channel or, or haven't watched us, that's over at twitch.tv slash Formula Forza. We will be live for the event. Um, and, and you'll get to hear my, my lovely commentating voice throughout that entire race. Now, my, my final thought here, I realize that this is a little bit short of a a podcast or a little bit short of a a pre-race show for you, but, uh, you know, my final thought is, is going to be a word of a little bit of caution in the face of what Derek just said. That's, you can't afford a mistake with a, a race this short. You cannot afford a mistake. I would say line up your your passes, make sure you're applying pressure in the areas uh, you know where you can't pass anyway. Just keep the pressure on and wait for that that point on the back straight or on the on the front straight to to make your maneuver because those will be the smartest passes and that's going to be the least likely for you get to get collected in some kind of. Uh, wreck or or get caught out being pushed off into one of the many areas we talked about that if you if you go wide uh you know you're going to lose a lot of time so you cannot afford a mistake on a on a track this short so that's that's my word of of caution there so thanks for listening guys uh you know if you if you haven't already i'm sure most of you are uh, fans of us on Facebook, but uh, head over to facebook.com slash Formula Forza and you'll be able to find us there and you'll see all the events there. You'll see lots of photos and and uh, and you'll have links to our videos there that we're over on, on YouTube as well. That's youtube.com slash Formula Forza admin. And you can also follow us for more media updates on Twitter. That's at Formula Forza. And, uh, you know, you can, you can tweet to us over there or if you've got questions for us or topics you'd like us to talk about during these uh pre-race shows we'd be more than happy to uh take a look at some of those uh but until then we'll be seeing you in uh at the, sunday. At the next race after this so uh, right right we'll be seeing you at sunday for the race broadcast so thanks for listening guys we really appreciate it yeah till next time guys For the completely absent Brad James, I'm Derek James, signing off. Thank you. So where do you think Brad will actually uh, go off on this track? Um, You know, if I had to pick one corner, I would say turn one, and then there's probably turn five, and turn six is pretty hairy, too. He'll probably go off there. Uh... Three and four. I think we'll probably see one off there as well. Uh, turn two is is kind of rough for him. You know, when I when I think about it, and the final turn, yeah, yeah, pretty much the final turn as well. So I, it's really tough to narrow down. I mean, you know, pretty much the the turns I just mentioned, and and maybe one or two more. Pretty much the entire track. Yeah, I, you know. Can we just put him in a rally car and let him drive in the dirt? <laughs> He's going to spend most of the race there anyways. It's, it's just going to be a, a cloud of 
curse words and dust is around Brad's car the entire race. Right? They'll be like, who let Pigpen in a car? <laughs> oh, Brad. Wish you were here. But, but not, not really. really. Loves. Lollicopters. <laughs>